Our wisdom is getting affected by Rahu, which is our subconscious. And therefore we are getting, uh, we have a possibility, I like to say possibility, to a totally untrained person to uh, take in all the fears, the anxieties, the old patterns. I don't think any one of you are untrained, so don't feel you are going to react in a raw state. You see, what they take, talk about Rahu is that Ra Rahu is your raw state, your total tamas, which needs, if you have purified it, it can be very high divine state as well. But, you know, in, in a way it is raw power. It's raw strength, it's raw subconscious. <laughs> so, if it is, uh, so in one way Jupiter is affecting it positively. But Jupiter, that is our wisdom, is hugely influenced by this rawness of energy. Generally, you know, the guru, the wisdom, the knowledge is much more refined. It's not raw. The knowledge by nature is more refined. And Jupiter is well placed in Leo, but it's retrograde. That means it's also not thinking more practically. Uh, what is uh, retrograde is like your vakarasana. Uh, in yogic terms, retrograde is like vakarasana. So when you twist back, uh, if you remember how to twist back properly, mm -hmm. you, if you are doing a standing twist, your feet must be on the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If your feet are not on the ground, you've toppled over. If mm -hmm. you are doing a sitting twist, your hips must be grounded. And then you can twist. I can't twist properly a little bit I can. But, uh, you know, if you twist back, and you see that the vakarasana, there are all sorts of vakarasana they do, uh, means that in order to do the retrograde properly, if you are grounded, you are okay. But if your life is ungrounded at that time, you know, you are very easy that you can topple over. It is just so easy. So, what do you do is you ground yourself. Ground yourself in truth, in your practice, in whatever you're doing. Because this retrograde, especially this Jupiter till 5th of uh, uh, May, but actually even a bit longer because Jupiter goes direct and remains with Rahu till um, middle of July. So you see that it's the Rahu-Jupiter effect, but up to 5th of May they are retrograde. So in retrograde, uh, the greatness of retrograde is that it allows you to see life from a totally <coughs> different perspective. But in order to see life from a different perspective, even your knowledge from a much higher, different energy, we must remain grounded. And we must quieten the voice of Rahu. Because that is what next year means, your subconscious can play out. Hmm? And it would play up every day. Don't think all five months of it is going to be, or it's actually more than five months, it's from end of January right up to uh, July. So you have like almost six months. Of, but at certain stages, suddenly they wake up. Because Rahu Ketu are described as uh, snake energy. And the snake energy will suddenly wake up and demand to be heard. And at that time it's obsessive. But if we have remained in our truth, in our vakarasana that is nicely grounded, then we have less likely to topple over, to uh, spoil whatever we have done. Of course, you can always get up and restart again. But you know, the thing is, is that we don't want, the idea about talking about these planets and working with them is that we don't go to that extreme. We may have a minor topple rather than a major topple or a major, uh, you know, spoiling of our energy. Uh, so then to add to this problem, we have a long uh, conjunction of Mars and Saturn. So today, as we are talking, this this uh, TTC, uh, you have been having uh, Mars and Saturn opposite each other. But 
uh, there's been one very great redeeming feature that Jupiter is exalted. So the Guru is very powerful. That's why over this TTC, what you're hearing, all the Gurus also are specially energized. So you are hearing way, uh, you are hearing something very powerful, your knowledge. And of course you need, this so intensive, you need months to process it once you get to the knowledge, but you are getting some very good quality knowledge at this time. Uh, but what is happening next year is that um, because um, Jupiter is with Rahu, so the Guru also needs to work doubly hard. Uh, but Mars and Saturn come together. So at present Mars and Saturn are opposite each other. And, but what is happening next year is that Saturn is for the long haul in Scorpio. This year, next year, he's in Scorpio. When Saturn comes into a sign, he grinds his way through the sign. And Shani, his big role is your karma. When Saturn comes visiting, he's saying, this is a good time to pay back your karma. So he's an expensive planet to experience. <laughs> so, his, he gives expense, even money expenses, not just uh, because you are being asked to pay back debt. So debt can be to people, people can suddenly come and want some portion of you. But instead of running away, you should say, okay, let me try to do it because subconsciously you're paying back your debt. But it can also be financially expensive. So if you have like Sun in Scorpio, Moon in Scorpio, Ascendant in Scorpio, then this is time for that, paying back debt. But, so Saturn is also our, um, you know, he's like our exams in life, Yama Niyam. You know, Niyam more is connected to Mars, I think, because this is the discipline. But the yama is the things that we have to face, do's and don'ts. Uh, but what happens next year is that, so Saturn by nature is cautious. He's telling you to be cautious, encouraging you to be incautious. It's very interesting Saturn encourages people to be incautious, or maybe that's the wrong word, to take risks so that he can teach you a lesson. <laughs> So he encourages you to behave in the opposite way because his job is to teach you something so that you learn by that. So last time uh, Saturn created that um, total uh, boom in the property prices and then crash and boom in the money and then crash because the boom is part of the boom and bust because if, he does, if you are taking risks, you're not being cautious, you're not, you're following your subconscious totally, you're not allowing the instinct, then, um, not instinct, the inspiration to take place, then you are caught in that Saturn karma. If you are using your consciousness and super consciousness, then you're saying, okay, my job is there, I have to do that. So next year what is happening is, that Saturn has been in Scorpio, so we are used to him at present. But next year, Mars is joining in Scorpio. Now, Mars' job is totally different. Mars is telling, do something, take the risk. Saturn is saying, be cautious. Uh, so, when Mars and Saturn get together, it's a, it creates a friction between our caution and our action. And it is a frustrating energy. And it can bring certain blocks to us, it can bring difficulty. Normally, Mars, Saturn, they conjunct, they separate, they go their merry way. They do it once every two years. But next year, the thing is this, that both Mars and Saturn retrograde together in Scorpio. So they're endlessly in Scorpio together. So, and Leslie means five, six months. So, uh, uh, and to add to that, we have this Jupiter Rahu happening at the same time. So, Mars goes into Scorpio 
and I will just give you the date for that. Uh, and they're all happening simultaneously, but uh, Mars goes into Scorpio sometimes in uh, February. I'm just finding February now. Yeah, it's uh, 20th of February. And then it's uh, going to retrograde on Seventeenth of April, and it's going to then go direct on twenty ninth of June, and then it is going to get out of Scorpio. So you see again that whole period when Mars, Jupiter is with Rahu, Mars is with Saturn. So. Uh, It comes back into, uh, it gets out only in September. So it's 